Fascinating. Then the excess. Yet a current disclosure has prompted an essential split between researchers as they take a take a gander at the realities. Now, the hotly anticipated epiphany has shown up as famous astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson uncovers the shocking discoveries in space. Go along with us as we find how Explorer 1 recognized 500 obscure items passing through space and investigate Tyson's contemplations on this astonishing disclosure on June 30, 198. A stony space rock collided with Earth on June 30, 198, striking a city in Siberia, Russia. The strong effect of this occasion brought about the wrecking of about 2,000 square kmers. The significant significance of this occasion resonated overall, causing a worldwide shock wave. Ensuing exploration prompted the book The Implicit Collusion Between Astronomy and the Military by Neil deGrasse Tyson, where he featured the union of logical investigation and public security, pushing for moved along interest in space investigation to safeguard our planet. This sublime work reformed public mindfulness encompassing the significance of space investigation. In an astounding turn of occasions, NASA's Space Apparatus Explorer 1 has identified 500 obscure objects cruising by in space, leaving researchers confused. Neil deGrasse Tyson, the widely acclaimed astrophysicist, has arisen to give truly necessary clarity. However, as researchers dove into the secret of these 500 unidentified items, they coincidentally found a magnificent disclosure about Explorer 1 itself. But before we take a gander at that disclosure, we should first really get to know the astounding Explorer 1 space apparatus. Explorer 1, the courageous space pilgrim, has by and by went over an astounding 1.45 billion miles from Earth. The speed at which the shuttle goes through space is genuinely astonishing, covering a distance roughly 3.6 times the space between the Earth and the Sun each year. Yet there's another side to the interstellar test than only its speed, sturdiness, and distance from Earth. Explorer has sent a few weighty disclosures to us, like the new 500 obscure articles it identified out there in the limitlessness of room. These are uncommon heavenly items that we won't ever see or then again analyze before. We will get into that gigantic disclosure in one minute. However, there is an inquiry that is logical on your brain right now. How could a rocket that was sent off way back in 1977 still be working and conveying such noteworthy information? Well, the response lies in the wonderful designing and premonition that went into Explorer 1's plan. One of the critical mysteries to Explorer's lifespan is its double XS PC frameworks. Every Explorer space apparatus, including Explorer 1, was furnished with two arrangements of order PC subsystems, the Flight Data Subsystems, FDS, and the Altitude and Articulation Control Subsystems, AAC. This overt repetitiveness filled in as a critical safeguard, permitting consistent changes among frameworks and the capacity to activate lethargic PC parts, consequently expanding their life expectancy. The PC framework's onboard Explorer 1 and its twin Explorer 2 were planned as a dispersed framework with three double redundant sets of PCs. This overt repetitiveness ensured that regardless of whether one framework fizzled, the other could dominate, for stalling crucial disappointments to utilize restricted power sources. Explorer units relied upon designed rationale, meaning the PCs were planned with rearranged design circuits to guarantee that they would be able function within the constraints of force budgets and time limits during the rocket's turn of events. Yet power the board is major in maintaining Explorer 1's operational honesty. The rocket's separation from the sun, where it can harness solar energy, poses a huge test to maximizing power efficiency. Designers had to come up with creative ways to monitor and optimize power use. The power control system utilized by this phenomenal man-made test is really exceptional. One basic part of force the executives includes selectively shutting down unnecessary frameworks. Designers meticulously evaluated what parts or, on the other hand, subsystems are not fundamental for the essential mission objectives. For example, heaters associated with certain logical instruments were deactivated. These heaters were at first expected to maintain the instruments at explicit temperatures for ideal execution. By switching them off, power utilization is essentially decreased, thusly expanding the shuttle's overall life expectancy. This decision to shut down unnecessary frameworks isn't trifled with. It requires a cautious assessment of the trade-offs between power preservation and the logical objectives of the mission. 
engineers work together intimately with researchers to guarantee that deactivating explicit frameworks doesn't compromise the quality and availability of logical information. The objective is to find some kind of harmony that expands power efficiency while keeping up with basic usefulness. However, it's not all. Explorer One's power, the board frameworks, additionally adjust to the changing states of its current circumstance. As the space apparatus voyages further from the sun, the accessible sun-oriented energy diminishes. To make up for this, Explorer One changes its power utilization appropriately. That's what this versatile methodology guarantees. Accessible energy assets are productively apportioned to help fundamental tasks and information transmission over the long haul. There have been progressing specialized headways and overhauls in power the board procedures, permitting architects to refine and streamline the power frameworks of the Explorer tests. These upgrades incorporate more proficient energy distribution, progressed battery charging procedures, and headways in power regulation and control. Thanks to these careful power the board systems, specialists have effectively expanded Explorer 1's functional life expectancy, enabling it to proceed with its noteworthy logical venture through the universe. Since the rocket was at first intended to keep going for only five years, the way that it's as yet sending back information almost 50 years later is out and out astounding. It features the assurance and expertise of the researchers and designers who have worked energetically to keep Explorer 1 functional. But notwithstanding this cautious arranging and designing, the depths of profound space remain unusual. Don't go anywhere because a significant disclosure is coming. What did Explorer 1 find? What did Explorer 1 find that shock researcher? While there are some assumptions for what Explorer may first experience meteoroids, space rocks, and space rocks, there is dependably the potential for startling amazements. One such surprising curve in the Explorer 1 excursion was the space apparatus case of distinguishing 500 puzzling objects. This disclosure created a ruckus and raised huge worries among the researchers chipping away at the venture. These strange signs and abnormalities in the information came as a total shock. Explorer 1 started communicating telemetry information back to Earth. However, the readings were bizarre and there was no great reason for what was going on. The researchers ordered this peculiarity as an irregularity. However, in spite of the whimsical transmission, Explorer 1 kept on answering orders for mission control, albeit with a slight delay in correspondence. This presented a mind-boggling circumstance and grew the mystery. What was particularly testing about this inconsistency was that it didn't set off Explorer 1's locally available issue security frameworks. These frameworks are intended to initiate when peculiarities are distinguished, placing the rocket into an experimental mode that permits specialists to research and analyze the issue. In this case, however, Explorer 1 proceeded with its activities without entering experimental mode, adding to the interest. After comprehensive exploration, the peculiarity was followed back to the Altitude and Articulation Control Subsystem, AACS. The AACS assumes a critical part in exactly situating the rocket and controlling its developments. It was found that the AACS had been sending telemetry information through an embedded PC that had stopped working quite a while back. This ancient PC, which shouldn't have been associated with information handling, had somehow become entrapped in the telemetry transmission process, leading to the corruption of the data being sent back to Earth. The mission presently was to fix this irregularity and determine if there were indeed 500 obscure items out there. The arrangement involved retraining the AACS to divert telemetry data to the appropriate working PC. This maintenance was considered low risk and was effectively achieved. However, addressing this inconsistency was not without its unique set of challenges. One of the most significant obstacles faced by the mission team was the significant time delay in communication. Explorer 1 is now located around 1.46 billion miles from Earth, a truly stunning distance. Hence, it takes a considerable measure of time for radio signals to travel this vast territory. When the mission team at NASA's Deep Space Network, DSN, sends an order to Explorer 1, it goes as a radio signal at the speed of light. The DSN is a broad network of massive radio antennas precisely positioned around the globe. Its primary function is to lay out two-way communication between Earth and deep space missions. The DSN collaborates with various space agencies worldwide, making a unified effort to explore and investigate the mysteries of space. 
the communication with Explorer 1 happens through radio waves, using the enormous antennas at these DSN stations. While sending data from the rocket to Earth, a frequency of either 23 gigahertz or 84 gigahertz is used on channel 18. On the other side, while sending signals from Earth to Explorer 1, a frequency of 21 gigahertz is used. Despite the vast speed of light, even at this speed, it requires around 22 hours for a command to reach the shuttle. This time delay adds a layer of complexity to communicating with Explorer 1. The mission team must carefully plan and execute orders, considering the expected response time. Any errors or issues can result in unexpected setbacks and challenges during the inconsistency research. This time delay posed a specific challenge. It meant that diagnostic and troubleshooting methods were significantly extended. Commands needed to be carefully developed, keeping in mind the 22-hour waiting period before receiving any confirmation or response from Explorer 1. Yet here's the striking part. Despite the significant time delay, each message sent to Explorer 1 was not simply adding to the information. It was a critical piece of the mission. The time delay might limit real-time control and communication, but it doesn't diminish the importance of the communication. Each message was a vital part of the puzzle in resolving the anomaly. Ultimately, the anomaly was fixed at its source, and the faulty PC was shut down. Explorer 1, the glorious space apparatus, could then forge ahead with its exceptional venture through the vastness of space, sending back valuable data and insights to Earth. Now that we know the past glitch of the space test has been settled, let's look at the exceptional achievements of the spaceship when it had no issues. The primary objective of the wonderful shuttle, sent off on September 5, 1977, was to explore our close planet group. However, its process stretched out beyond that beginning reason. Explorer 1's story began with an interesting turn. A very long time previously arriving at Jupiter, it started sending photos of the gas giant. These early pictures displaying Jupiter's stunning whirling mists and the persevering Great Red Spot were a moment hit at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. But this was simply the preface to a journey that would redefine space exploration. What truly set apart the Explorer was the two historic observations. The discovery of active volcanoes on Jupiter's moon, Io. This innocent moon, slightly larger than Earth's moon, held a great secret. It was the most volcanically active body in our entire planetary system. Explorer 1's instruments identified unusual signals from Io, and the striking images it captured unveiled a world of towering volcanic plumes and a surface scarred by the eruption of volcanic material. Among these, Pele, one of Io's most distinctive volcanoes, has erupted as high as three times the height of Mount Everest, covering an area nearly the size of France. The secrets of our close planet group were unfolding before our eyes. Before the recent mind-bending discovery of 500 unknown objects passing by in space, the twin explorers were wowing us since their send-off. One of their most anticipated discoveries was the existence of Jupiter's rings. These delicate rings, while faint, added an aura of mystery to the already enigmatic gas giant. Explorer 1 added yet another piece to the puzzle by revealing that Europa, one of Jupiter's 53 named moons, was encased in an icy shell over 60 miles thick. This challenged our previous assumptions about the nature of distant celestial bodies and sparked a new wave of interest in the potential habitability of icy moons. But there's more. As the explorers bid goodbye to Jupiter, they received a valuable goodbye gift a gravity assist. This gravitational boost, much like a cosmic slingshot, propelled them towards Saturn. Without it, they would have been trapped in the sun's gravitational grasp, unable to venture further into space. Explorer 1's path took it close to Saturn's mesmerizing moon, Titan. Covered in an orange haze-filled atmosphere, Titan's mystery piqued researchers' curiosity, prompting in-depth studies of its complex chemistry. Explorer 1 then set out on a course towards the outer reaches of the planetary system. Amidst this myriad of discoveries and wonders, there was one individual who played a crucial role in extending the missions beyond their initial objectives, the eminent astronomer Carl Sagan. As a member of the Explorer Missions Imaging Team, Sagan fervently advocated for one last set of images before shutting down the space apparatus cameras. These images, he believed, would be a keepsake to humanity 
offering a final glimpse of our home planet from the depths of space. Sagan's determination paid off. On Valentine's Day in 1990, Explorer 1 turned its camera back towards the planetary system. The result was a series of 60 images, one of which was iconic, the pale blue dot, taken from a distance of 3.8 billion miles. It remained the farthest picture of our planet ever recorded. Earth appears as a tiny pale blue spot, barely visible amidst the vast cosmic backdrop. Explorer 1 illustrates an incredible story of exploration, perseverance, and durability. Even after 40 years, the brave adventurer continues to send valuable data from the farthest corners of our vast neighborhood. But what's truly remarkable is their reliance on 8-track tapes. Yes, you heard it right, these extraordinary probes still use 8-track tapes, a testament to the ingenuity of the mission's designers. That these robust tapes have endured over the decades is noteworthy. You might ask why 8-track tapes were chosen at the time of their send-off. Digital storage as we know it today was in its infancy. They needed a reliable and durable data storage system, and 8-track tapes fit the needs perfectly. What's more exceptional is that the data stored on these tapes isn't your typical music or entertainment content. It's scientific data of immense importance about the outer planets, moons, and interstellar space. These tapes hold the key to understanding some of the most significant mysteries of the universe. Now, why is Neil deGrasse Tyson so enthusiastic about this new discovery, and what does it have to do with extraterrestrial life? Let's talk about Neil deGrasse Tyson, the famous astrophysicist, prolific author, and engaging host of Star Talk on National Geographic is essentially the man who makes astronomy cool. Neil deGrasse Tyson has a talent for making complex scientific concepts accessible to the general public, which has earned him a large following and considerable respect. But beyond his role as a science communicator, Tyson is also a respected scientist with an impressive body of research and academic work to his name. As the director of the Hayden Planetarium in New York City, Tyson is deeply involved in education and outreach efforts aimed at inspiring the next generation of scientists and explorers. His passion for space exploration and his dedication to advancing our understanding of the universe are evident in everything he does.